have also been named an honor roll school and a STEM honor school. Podesta Ranch has been named an honor roll school, Manlio Silva an honor roll school, and Vinewood an honor roll school. So congratulations to all those schools. Uh, they did receive letters from this organization uh, letting them know that they have been selected and their schools will be uh, posted. That information will be posted on the website and they have a banner for them and it's a nice recognition for the school. So I want to congratulate them on that. Also want to let you know that um, remind you that we have the film camp going on at Needham West this week with Joey Travolta. I went over there today to take a peek and it is quite a sight. Let me tell you what they're doing with students, young folks at Needham West is quite amazing. There was a group of students who were working on a trailer for a move for the film that they're doing and um, a young man was leading this group of students in a discussion and every student was involved and engaged and when he said quiet on the set boy it was quiet on the set um, and then mr Travolta was in another room videotaping students while he interviewed them he was asking individual students one at a time um, what um, if they had three wishes what it would be um, what their dream job would be um, if they had superpowers, what would it be? All kinds of interesting questions, and the responses were, were quite amazing from the kids. So this is going to be very exciting. If you want to take a look, uh, please go over to Needham West. On Thursday, they will be at Hutchinson Street uh, doing a Shark Tank format activity. So you might want to take a peek at that as well. You can give us a call if you want to know their schedule. But it is really something special for these kids. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Washer. Continuing on with action items, consent agenda A, routine business. Uh, any items pulled by the board? President Alba, I'd like to pull A1. Uh, Mr. Frizz, A1. President Alba, I need to pull item A3 for purposes of abstaining. A3 for extension. Any other items? Any members from the audience want to pull any items on this routine agenda? If not, then uh, Mr. Freitas, item, uh, excuse me, we have a, a motion to approve. Item. Motion to approve. Uh, it's been moved by Mr. Ne uh, Mr. Mr. Heverly, second by Mr. Womack to approve uh, the remainder of the uh, agenda A, routine agenda. A call for the vote. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. aye. Okay, motion carries 7 0. Uh, Mr. Freitas, item A1. Thank you, President Alba. Last year I pulled this item because I challenged the staff to uh, encourage more fresh produce, and I'll be darned if they didn't take me up on my challenge and do that. So I did compare numbers, and I saw that uh, we are going away from uh, unhealthy foods to healthier foods, and that's absolutely fantastic, and I wanted to commend them on that. Also, I wanted to commend them on uh, their purchase of the dairy products from Producers Dairy. One of the reasons I'm in this business is because I wasn't very good on the dairy and I got kicked off it and had to get a real education. But uh, uh, dairy is very close to my heart and I'm glad to see that we're also supporting the dairy industry and providing that to our children. So with that being said, I would move to approve item A1. It's been moved by Mr. Ron Freitas to approve item A1. Second, Second by Mr. Heverly. Uh, all in favor, aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Okay, motion carries, 7-0. Uh, Mr. Neely, minutes of uh, anime three, excuse me. Uh, Mr. Nova, I just need to abstain from this, uh, this particular one. Uh, it's a minute and I was absent from that. Okay, very good, thank you, sir. Uh, need a motion? Motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Heverly. Second by Mr. Womack to approve item A3. Uh, all in favor, aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Abstentions? Abstain. Okay, uh, six, zero, one abstention. Uh, motion carries. Uh, we'll go with the, we don't have any discipline cases this today, which is always good not to have that. Uh, other items, uh, action items. Approval of the Associate Superintendent Chief Business Officer Employment Contract, uh, Dr. Washer. 
Thank you, Ms. Nava. Members of the board, uh, this contract is in alignment with other uh, increases that you've given staff. Uh, so this will extend for a year and give a similar type of increase to our CBO. Thank you. Any comments from the board? Any comments from the audience? Good evening. Um, I have a couple of questions that I would like ask answered. Um, in the end result, how much is this compensation package? Well, I'm allowed to ask questions. This is public comment question time. Well, I'll direct that to uh, Mr. Hearns. Okay. Or Ms. Ke uh, Dr. Walker. I believe it's, uh, I've seen the number, but it's 12,000. It's going from 160 to the new dollar amount over the two year period. There it is. $12,992. So the current, so the new salary is $172,992. Am I reading that correctly? That is correct. Thank you. And um, my question is, is that, and I have a couple of questions. So one of them is that I know that some individuals have their, um, health benefits as part of their salary. So is this 6% on that total package? Is that a, on the total? Mr. Nava, this is benefits on salary. Just salary, not. There, there is no, there is no, there's no, other, no other dollars other than what's stated. Okay. So with, is that equivalent to what the other employees who have separate um, salary and health benefits is that they, did they get their compensation based on the total amount? The six percent and two percent. Right. So I think I understand what she's asking. Mr. All yes. the members of the board, the increase is based on salary, not benefits. Salary only. Okay, and so since some employees have their health benefits, they actually got a smaller raise than if you had it all together. Is that it, what I'm it, hearing? I say? understand what you're asking, but it's not cal it's not Calculated. it's not presented that way because administrators do not get any contribution to health benefits. There isn't a dollar amount that's set that this is the contribution for health benefits and this is the salary. It's all salary. I understand that part. My, what I was asking, and I think you already know what I was asking, I was asking if it was an equivalent amount to the total compensation that the other employees received, but they just got theirs on salary, is what you're saying. I'm I, no, I know what you're asking. It's a difficult question to answer because it's not, the management salaries are, are not presented that way, the same as other employees. Other employees have salary and then their benefits, so any increase would go on the salary, not the benefits, unless they negotiate an increase in benefits as well, which some did. For confidential and management, there is no piece of benefit, it's just salary. So there isn't, I know what you're asking, is that dollar amount subtracted out of the salary? No. It's just seen as salary. Okay. okay. So <laughs> my conclusion would be that, that 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 it's a little higher amount. Okay. So then I have another um, question, and um, and I remember that when we ask questions, we're not talking about the people; we're talking about the position. Okay. And so when we're looking at all of this, it's just like a teacher or anything, we're not talking about a person. It's a position. But I believe that there was a pay raise by a decrease in work um, days. And so I'm wondering if um, 
that was subtracted out or if indeed this position ended up with an extra raise while the other people were taking a cut we had when days came back I believe that this position that not all the days came back but the salary was remained the same so in essence a per diem increase uh, occurred Mr. Noah. Yes, Mr. Uh, that's incorrect. The associate superintendent's position was for $163,000, and I, I think it was one sixty-three-seven. I took $160,000 in lieu of that dollar amount with the five additional days off. There was no oh, okay. change. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That really clears that up because I thought that you that the the days that the stayed the same um you know the one thing that i know many of you were not here but um, one of the things that happened prior to the current positions is that um that position had been suggested and received um a twenty about a twenty thousand dollar raise and um, in, in, in a time when uh, other positions in the district had not received those. So I think if we're trying to be, some people mentioned equity or being equitable last time, there's not been that kind of um, benefit that's come back to other employee groups. And this has nothing to do with current people that this occurred before that they are in the office but truly that um, since it did occur and no compensation has been made to other groups I think you know it might be something we might want to consider in the past if we want to consider things to be equitable thank you thank you board members this is Alex. yes Mr. Nee. sorry just one quick comment on that. I believe Mrs. Heavily is, is correct. Although the difference we're talking about here is six hundred eighty dollars a year, uh, if you use the the basic amount that we give to, to everyone for for benefits. So six hundred eighty bucks a year. That's what it is. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dean. If I could, yes, just, just one well, clarification. Yes. So everyone understands as well. When the management or confidential take a pay cut, it's pay cut on the total amount. There's no benefits involved. So it works both ways. Right. So just clarify. Thank you, Dale. President Alba. Yeah, Mr. Freitas. We move to approve uh, the assistant superintendent's contract. It's Second. been moved by Mr. Freitas, second by Mr. Womack to approve the uh, associate <coughs> superintendent chief business officer's employment contract. Yes, I'll take a roll call vote. Mr. Freitas. Aye. Mr. Womack. Aye. Mr. Uh, Everly? Aye. Mr. Neely? Aye. Uh, Ms. Castle? Aye. Dr. Talkin? Aye. Joe Navant? Yes. Okay, motion carries 7 0. Approval of su Superintendent's Contract Sixth Amendment. Uh, similar to what we have here, only we have an extension of uh, the Superintendent's Contract in 2018 and the same amount of compensation. As everybody else. Uh, any comments from the board? Comments from the audience? Mr. Nava? Yes, Mr. Neely. I want to uh, comment on the approval of this. Uh, this, is, uh, this is kind of tough. I'm not going to vote to approve this. Knowing that there are enough votes that it will pass. How do you know that, Mr. Neely? No, I just believe it. Okay. <laughs> it's a belief, it's not a, it's not a known fact. Um, and the reason I'm not going to is this is a vote to extend a contract, not necessarily, uh, it's not a vote to eliminate or to get rid of Dr. Washington the vote to extend the contract. I have some issues, and, and Dr. Washer knows about those issues that she and I will talk about. 
But I just want to let it be known, and for that reason, I won't be voting yes to approve this. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Neely. Any other comments from the board? Comments from the audience? Thank you. Um, actually, I think you answered one of my questions previously about the total compensation package, so thank you. Um, so my question is, what is the total um, compensation package for this position? For this position? Yes. For this Can you open it up? This, this, this so, isn't this a also, it's not a talking about a raise? Is it just? Yes. A, are you talking about the increase? Six percent is. No, I was talking about what the final amount is. Like two hundred forty-eight thousand. Okay, so that's the final amount. That's the salary. After the raise or before the raise? After. Thank you. Um, and likewise, okay. So a little historical perspective before the members of that are currently here. Um, we had a time when the superintendent left and they said that, um, that the person was doing two jobs and so the salary for this position was raised because they were doing two jobs. And then when the person left in that interim superintendent position, um, that salary remained the same, which is why part of the reason why this salary is kind of like a little, no, you know, not people, but it's a little out of whack um, compared to other salaries in the district. Um, so, you know, that being said, since those things occurred and um, it has, we've had this happen before where one salary stays high and then even when the new person comes in, even if they don't have the experience, they still end up with the salary. And, and again, this is just a perspective. It has nothing to do with the people here. But um, um, being public education, and I just do not think that, I think that this is a really high salary for public education. And that's my comment. And at some point in time, perhaps we can look at structuring the salary scales in such a way that we don't um, have people that are barely making a living and having it skewed. I know it's a lot of work, but they do it in other organizations. So, because if you, you know, obviously if you're making $200,000 and you get a 10% raise, it's $20,000. But if you're making $10,000, you get it. it's a $2,000 raise. So that discrepancy keeps occurring. And so at some point in time, we might want to consider um, reformatting the formula for how salaries are done. Thank you. Any other comments from the? Dr. Dr. Washer, members of the board, uh, Lisa Wilkins, Vice President of LEA. Um, I just have to agree with what Mrs. Heberly said in, in that I know la at the last meeting it was discussed about um, equity, but the gap is just so huge and I did not go into education to make money. Okay, um, this is a second career for me. I spent 20 years in technology, in um, data networking. I worked for startups where the CEO made less than that. You know, the CEO of the companies, a few of the companies I worked for didn't make that much more than those of us who were directors or other C-level positions. And so it just does seem that this is a really, inequitable and I don't know when this happened in public education where superintendents started making CEO level salaries and it just doesn't seem right it doesn't seem that this is what I think the taxpayers really want with um, w with their money I think they think that it's going to the kids and 
yeah, it, it just it bothers me a lot. So um, I'm not saying that we should not fairly pay our um, the superintendent and the, the associate superintendents, but somewhere it, this is just way skewed. Thank you. Board members, President Nava. Yeah, Mr. Freitas. I move to approve the superintendent's sixth amendment to her contract. And move second. by Mr. Freitas, second by Mr. Womack to approve the sixth amendment of employment contract. Uh, roll call vote. Mr. Freitas. Aye. Mr. Uh, Womack. Aye. Mr. Everly. No. Uh, Mr. Neely. No. Uh, Ms. Castle. Aye. Dr. Talkin. Aye. Uh, Mr. Nava. Aye. Motion carries 5 2. Uh, consolidate applications for funding categorical eight funds for fiscal uh -huh. year 2015 16. Uh, Ms. Katoski. Dr. Katoski is here. Don Vericus. Oh, Ms. Vericus. I'm kidding. Ms. Katowski went on vacation. How dare she? Yeah. So I am here to um, talk about it's the con app is filled out every single year and sent to the Department of Education so they can send it to the federal government so we can get all our federal dollars. And if we have questions, Josie is here to answer them. Any comments from the board? Any comments from the audience? Wishes of the board? Okay, second. been moved by Mr. Womack, second by Mr. Heberly to approve the consolidated application for funding categorical funds. Uh, roll call vote, uh, Mr. Freitas? Aye. Mr. Womack? Aye. Mr. Heberly? Aye. Mr. Neely? Aye. Uh, Ms. Castle? Aye. Dr. Talkin? Aye. Mr. Nava? Aye. Motion carries 7 0. Personnel matters. Personnel. Yes, Mr. Neely. Instead of just approving it, I'd like to take a, a look at that for just a second. I have a comment on it. Sure, you bet. If we could look at all of the people that are leaving Lodi Unified, and it's, it's the typical stuff. It, it's, there are resignations there, there are retirements, and, and all of that. Uh, you know, a few years ago, that we suggested that we do exit interviews on these people. You know, if somebody's leaving World really Unified, we should talk to them and ask them basically the, you know, what's the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, what are we doing right? What do you see that we do differently? Uh, what really needs to be changed quickly? And I'm wondering if we've done that. If, you know, we've got some, uh, I think Judy Alba is on here, uh, incredible amount of talent and experience. I'm wondering if we talk to these people before they leave. And if not, how come we're not doing that? It doesn't cost us anything. And it's what good organizations do in order to make themselves better. Mr. Nava, Mr. Neely, members yes. of the board, yes. we do an exit survey, not an interview. We have um, started implementing an exit survey. Um, it is fairly easy to do with our certificated staff through the email system. Um, it is a little more challenging with classified staff. Um, we still haven't quite figured out um, the best way to approach that yet um, due to the fact that not all classified staff have email. Um, also, the transition is a lot greater throughout the year with classified, so tracking that. Uh, but we are working on a way to do, do that better. But we are doing exit surveys, um, not interviews. Is there some reason we decided not to do the interview? I believe we had talked about exit surveys before, and we have, it is a pretty good survey. I mean, it asks exactly what you just mentioned. Um, okay. and gives folks the opportunity to um, give written response as well, comments, which um, you know I've seen some of them they have done. We have not gotten the huge response. Um, we have a handful of folks that have uh, completed the survey, so we need to work on that as well. 
right, just a point. With that, Ms. Nava, if, uh, I'll uh, motion to approve. Okay, Mr. President Nava. Yes, Mr. Freitas. Uh, I've said it before, and, and let me say once again, I am so sad to see Linda Demon's name on this list. Uh, of course, all my comments come with a story, and I was a brand new board member for about 10 minutes when I got a phone call from her saying, come down to my school and tell me what you're all about. So she was my very first principal. She put me through the ringer, and I've tried to uh, live up to that standard that was expected of her ever since. And uh, she's an absolutely amazing lady. Uh, uh, this is a loss that we're going to feel for a long time, and uh, I miss her already. So, but I wish her the uh, best in retirement. So, uh, nothing but the best for Ms. Denham. And I would second uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Neely's uh, motion. Thank you, Mr. Fitters. I've been moved by Mr. Neely, second by Mr. Fitters. Group personnel matters. Uh, all in favor, aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Communications. We will give you three minutes today on communications. Hopefully it's less than 20 minutes for all. I have a, a list here uh, of cards. Uh, who could keep time for me? Mr. Womack? Okay. Uh, Susan Haverly? Uh, I'll pass today. She'll pass. Uh, Malay O'Reilly? I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name. Not even correct, close. Correct me if I'm, <laughs> if I'm wrong. It's Malaya Riley. Malaya, thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. My name is Malaya Chesley Riley. I have been a teacher for Lodi Unified for 18 years. I teach kindergarten at Needham and have been here, have been at that school for five years now. I'd like to read a letter a group of teachers and I wrote to Dr. Washer, which I turned into the secretary in the superintendent's office yesterday at 12.30 p.m. Dear Dr. Washer, the purpose of this correspondence is to express our deep concern regarding the transfer of our principal, Ms. Maldonado, from Needham Elementary School. Let us first thank you for your leadership in our district. We know initially your appointment as superintendent of our district was a rocky one. After several years of your hard work and commitment, you were able to gain the trust of the Board of Trustees, the community, and staff. Your journey as superintendent somewhat mirrors the journey of Ms. Mal Maldonado at Needham School. As we are sure you are aware, Needham School has many challenges. It is a school with children who come from an environment of high poverty and subsequently high incidence of violence. Most students' primary language is not English, therefore learning and teaching becomes an even greater challenge for them and their teachers. Lastly, most of our students don't have the support systems that other students who come from more affluent neighborhoods. As we are also sure you are aware, research shows that students from high poverty communities succeed when there are fewer turnovers of teachers and leadership. That is why we are so concerned with your decision to move Ms. Maldonado from our school. As we stated earlier, her journey at Needham somewhat mirrored yours. Initially, Ms. Maldonado did not have the trust of staff and our parent community. But due to her hard work and her commitment, our students and our community, Ms. Maldonado demonstrated that her first and foremost, foremost concern was the success of her students. Student was what she was willing to listen to staff and take feedback in a positive way and make changes where necessary. She has partnered with many community organizations to provide additional services to our students and our community. She goes above and beyond when responding to parent and staff concerns. Her leadership is exactly what our students and, and community deserve. She has now gained the respect and trust of our parents, students, staff, and our school community in only the two years that she has been at our school. But her work at Needham Elementary School isn't finished. We know Larson Elementary also is in need of a principal. Our request is that the principal position be posted and filled through the normal interview process and that Ms. Maldonado remains at Needham Elementary. If our school district is truly committed to the success of our students of poverty, we know you will hear our concerns and allow Ms. Maldonado to remain as our instructional and community leader. Thank you, Ms. O'Reilly. I have Liliana 
Okay. 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 Okay.
For example, he can be sensitive to loud noises. The school cafeteria is just about the loudest place on campus. Mrs. Maldonado will allow him to eat outside on the days when the cafeteria is extra noisy. On the days he cannot eat outside, she allows him to wear earplugs. Wearing earplugs was our son's idea, and he felt comfortable enough to ask Mrs. Maldonado if that would be all right, and he asked her on his own. It was his own idea. That just speaks volumes about their relationship. She truly cares about our kids. We cannot even begin to imagine how our son will do not having Mrs. Maldonado there. She understands and appreciates that our son sees things in black and white. He knows if he is having a rough day, he can go and talk to Mrs. Maldonado about it. It takes such a long time to build that special bond between principal and student. It really makes us upset that Mrs. Maldonado was taken from Needham without the parents even being notified. This is a huge change for our little school. We do not have a vice principal. Our RSP teacher is changing. My son is getting an A for the first time ever, and I heard our speech teacher may be changing also, and now a different principal? What consistency is there at Needham for a child who needs consistency? We need consistency, consistency at Needham. We need Mrs. Maldonado to stay. In closing, we will do whatever we have to do to keep Mrs. Maldonado at Needham. That's why we are here tonight. Please request, reconsider your request for your decision to move Mrs. Maldonado. Needham might need her. And I have a question also. I was wondering how come parents were not notified that she was taken from our school? We were just supposed to show up and our children were gonna be greeted by a stranger? Want to comment on that, Dr. Washer? I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Pennington. You know staff decisions are made for a variety of reasons and I know that Dr. Washer brought this to you um, in close session and shared some information with you that I really was not privy to I mean I wasn't there so I can't share that with you nor nor would it be appropriate to do so at this time typically um, in our divisions we do move principals periodically for a variety of reasons currently the positions at Podesta Ranch and Needham as you know are posted and Dr. Washer and my replacement, um, Mrs. Lampkin, will be going through an interview process at that time. So that's the information that I can share with you this evening. Thank you, Ms. Bennington. Uh, how come parents weren't notified though? I, I just, my son has special needs and changes like this. I mean, we have to prep him for changes like this and for him to just show up on the first day of school with a complete stranger after he's built this relationship with Mrs. Maldonado. I and mean, at least a phone call or something so we can prep him. The best thing though is- You know, Ms. Blackwell, I don't think we, that's our protocol to do that. It hasn't been in the past when we changed principals from different schools to different schools uh, to notify the students at this point, not to my knowledge. Okay. Well, perhaps you could look into it then. Thank you, Ms. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Jonathan Arujo. My name is Jonathan Arajo. Um, I'm a student from Needham School. Um, I want Ms. Maldonado to stay because she really helped the school a lot. Because some kids at school, when we went to one of her meetings, they said that the school looked bad, that, and then she started painting the school with other people. And she planted a lot of plants outside on the front of the yard. And she helped the school a lot. Thank you, Jonathan. Alma Rodriguez. She feels really upset. 
Because Miss Maldonado has done a lot for her school. Miss Maldonado is always trying to bring the kids up. It's been years since we've had a principal like her. She has two kids uh, that have graduated from high school already. They went through that school. But they never had a principal like her. She's asking that you guys please think. The difference between her staying at her school and having her transfer to the other school. She's been there for a year. We need her for more years. Gracias. Gracias, Alma. Like she was saying that, you know, us, the parents, we weren't informed what was going on with Ms. Maldonado. Um, I also agree with her. They should have notified us because I was also, I also found out due to where I work, one of the teachers um, is our patient. And she was celebrating because she said Ms. Maldonado was gone. So I just feel that that's not right. You guys should have been, you know, you guys, we should have been notified. And I just feel it's not right that she should be celebrating if she's so happy about it. That's cool, keep it to yourself because we don't all think the same way. So I just feel that maybe you guys should think about the parents and our kids, please. Thank you. I have a problem with this one. Is it Manana Refinio? Refinio? I'm sorry. ¿Cómo es su nombre? María Luisa Rufino. Oh, María Luisa, gracias. Pues llegué un poquito tarde, ¿verdad? Porque tuve que trabajar. Está bien, está bien. Este, yo estoy aquí para apoyar a mis Maldonado, porque es una persona que llegó a la escuela con muchas ganas de trabajar, ¿verdad? Y eh, cuando ella entró ahí, yo le, le cuestioné varias veces, le dije, ¿qué va a hacer usted por la escuela? Y ella dijo, she's saying that when Miss Maldonado came into the school, the first thing she did is she asked Miss Maldonado, what are you going to do for our school? She said she was going to try to make our school better. She said that she told her, don't be like the other principal who just took the money and didn't do anything. Yes. For a long time. The school was really dirty. She said like the water fountains were filthy. She has pictures of that proof that before, that's how it was. The previous principal, she would mention to her, hey, can you clean it up? She never did. The kids would eat in the floor. And she didn't agree to that because, you know, people walk through there and a lot of things, you know, it's dirty in the floor. And she also has pictures of that. So when Ms. Maldonado came in and she started seeing all these improvements, then she was really happy to see all that. She cleaned up and mainly, you know, she has an area for kids to eat. So she's happy she doesn't want her to leave. So we want to do as much as we can so she can stay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the audience? We'll continue with the agenda. Comments from employee group representatives? None. Comments from board members? Mr. Freitas. 
the Eden School, thank you so much for coming out tonight. We love your school. We appreciate you. Uh, and everything you're telling us about uh, Principal Maldonado is dead on accurate. Uh, she is an amazing woman. She's an amazing talent. However, um, things happen for a reason. And you are going to be very, very happy with what's coming down the pipe. I don't know what it is, but I know you're going to make it work. And if it doesn't work, you're going to be right back here. We're going to fix it right away. Because you guys are very important to us. And uh, we appreciate you coming in here. And it's going to be a great school. And it's going to stay a great school. So thank you for all the work you've done. Also, uh, Ms. O'Reilly, you brought up a very good point. Uh, education of poverty. This is an issue that is very important in our district. We now have uh, designated the entire uh, district, if I'm correct, a Title I district. Is that correct? <coughs> in some ways, Mr. Hearn? Yes, that's correct. So now it's even become more and more important that we have strategies to educate the impoverished and that we make sure that we're creating the best opportunities for all of our uh, families that have, our, have poverty and all of our students that come from poverty. So I would ask that we have a special study session to discuss, uh, to discuss this very one item this fall so that we can in fact be sure that we are using the best practices available from other districts to ensure that our students are getting the best educational experience uh, that is possible. So I would encourage that we schedule that as soon as possible. Thank you. So I, I just, I agree with everything that you said. Yes. Um, I, I know we can't have a little yes, back no, okay, so, between. So, right so is, that, is that a final decision now? We can't come back? We can't comment on that. The public comment time is for the public to come and give comments. This is not an item on the agenda, so the board cannot discuss it. Yes. Okay. Well, Dr. Washington, sorry. Exactly right. Thank you. Uh, any other board members? I'm sorry. Mr. No, Mr. I, I had a couple more things. Okay, Mr. Peters. One, one minute, then, Mr. Meeks. But we will promise. Sure. We pay these individuals a lot of money, and they do a great job, and they're going to do a great job for Needham School, and we'll see that continue. And uh, I look forward to that study session. Also, uh, Mr. Hearn, Dr. Washer, congratulations, and thank you for the great job that you do. And let me be the first to acknowledge Catherine's last board meeting. Wow. Okay, Mr. Neely, you got the floor, sir. Okay, very quickly, uh, I too want to thank the Eden parents for coming out of course like that. That's, that's fantastic. I think we can learn something here, is that maybe we need to handle transitions uh, with our principals better with our parents. Maybe we need to contact them, have meetings, uh, that kind of thing. We we shouldn't just let them find out uh, by whatever means. We should take the lead on it. And if we're going to do a transition, we need to do it with the parents as well. So maybe we could do something on that. Also, uh, Ms. Benitez, I still owe you lunch. When I get back, maybe it'll be salmon. You know, because I'm, I'm here in Alaska. I'll bring you some back. Sounds good. Any, any other uh, Thanks, George. Any other comments? Uh, Mr. Everly. Uh, I was going to mention the same thing that uh, Mr. Ne Neely mentioned about uh, we should not be afraid of letting people know the plan and the intention of reassignments and so forth. Uh, there is always a bigger picture of why and why not people move or don't move. Uh, but I think that trying to get that information out is really important so that people aren't surprised at the last minute and say, what in the world is this? Um, and Needham School has a real spot in my heart because that's the school I attended. That was a long time ago. Thank you, Mr. Gerber. Uh, Ms. Castle? Ms. Castle? We have lost her. Lost her. Dr. Calkin? And no comment at this time. No comment at this time. Mr. Womack? Yes. Uh, I do want to thank the folks from Needham and the parents. <coughs> it's good to see you come out and provide that input. As a matter of fact, some of you may or may not know that uh, part of our uh, local control accountability plan, the LCAP, uh, requires us 
it's also the right thing to do, but it requires us to communicate more with the community. And one of the problems we've had, actually, is we've had meetings to develop the priorities and what have you, and we've had very, very sparse attendance. So I would hope that maybe uh, you, you're a good example here, and maybe you get the word out to other parents to get involved. And when they have next year's round, when we, when we go back to LCAP, we update it every year. When we have those meetings, please come out, because that's what helps give us ideas on the direction on any changes for the LCAP. And LCAP basically is where we spend the funding from the state. And there's some very specific funding in there for schools and, and children who are struggling, and children in uh, poverty areas. So your input's gonna be very important on that. The last thing I'll say on that is that without any doubt at all, our children who succeed, the ones who do best are the ones who have a strong parental involvement in their life, like what you do. And so I would encourage you as role models to try to get other family members, other parents, excited about being involved in their parents, in, in, their, in their children's lives. And that means doing what you did as far as being in communication with the school and being a partner with the principal, a partner with the teachers, because they are trying to help work together on this. And what we find out often is when there's a drop off, sometimes they're not getting the extra support at home. So we really, really appreciate you and please spread the word <coughs> to how important we know it is for parents to be involved in their children's lives. And that doesn't mean just come down when there's a problem when you want to complain about. That means come down and talk with the teacher and help develop a plan for your child. So thank you and please do spread the word on both those, parental involvement and the LCAP update, which we'll be doing each year. And there's a number of those. They're advertised, they're on the website. Uh, people are busy so they don't come out, but I want to emphasize how important those are. Ms. Pennington, I've said it before, the lady with grace, but it has been a great pleasure the, the short four years I've worked with you, and we are gonna be sure of them here. And uh, that's it, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Womack. Thank you, parents and teachers of Needham. Uh, you know, like, instead Mr. Needy mentioned something, these practice, past practices can change. I think uh, it's very important I put myself in that position that you were as a teacher. Uh, one year, I came back in the fall and I had a new principal, a new vice principal, a new assistant principal. Nobody told me anything. They said, this is your boss right there. And uh, that's the way they do things in other districts. But hopefully, they will be more sympathetic and change the practices that we have. Like uh, Mr. Womack says, the OCAP will have a lot to do with parental involvement and uh, teacher involvement and student involvement in that case. So uh, hopefully again that we could uh, hear your, your, your concerns before. And as you know, whenever we have a crisis like this, a lot of parents show up, a lot of teachers show up, and it's good to hear because we learn from past practices as to what, what the communities in those particular areas need. Again, uh, uh, Ms. Pennington, uh, thank you for all your services of all these years. This is my seventh year on the board, and my gosh, it was, in, it was uh, a pleasure to work with you in regards to the professionalism and uh, the uh, things that, that, that you did for a lot of the parents that had concerns that you resolved a lot of problems, and I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, parents, again. And, uh, that, Terms, everything. Okay, now, any comments from uh, Dr. Washer? Thank you, Mr. Nava, members of the board. Thank you for acknowledging and recognizing Ms. Pennington. I was going to point out, uh, but didn't need to, that this is her, this is her last board meeting. Um, and as you know, she has just been a tremendous asset to this district. Uh, the programs that she has put in place, uh, what she had, the mentoring she has done to teachers and administrators. Uh, over the years, the service she has provided to children in this community um, is just unbelievable. It's, I don't know if there's anyone else like her, and we are definitely going to miss her. Thank you, Dr. Washer. Okay, Board Advisory Committee reports. Being none, future agenda items. Being none, 
Mr. Bauer. Yes, Mr. Neely. Move to adjourn. Oh, my gosh. Meeting adjourned. <laughs> All right, thanks, George. Thank you. See you, uh, Daryl, George, and uh, I think Bonnie's gone. I wanted to second his motion for adjournment. Oh, yes. second the motion by Mr. Talkin to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, George.